Yo, I'm Kerry 34 I'm still the most erotic Kerry man on the internet. And welcome to another tournament recap video of mine. What tournament am I talking about this time? Well, a few days ago at least, at the point where I'm recording this, the Kremlin Cup 3 happened. Or rather, the Kremlin Cup is the big tournament with with single events and this was the Crocodile Smackdown 3. The probably biggest Wi-Fi King K. Rule only tournament that sometimes happens. As I said, this was the third installment, the first of which I joined. 36k Rule players from all over the world registered for the tournament and tried to fight for the title of Maybe the best Wi-Fi cable at the moment, but probably not because unlike the second installment, big names like Kirby Kid or Troix did not show up. And another thing that happens with international Wi-Fi tournaments, a ton of players did not show up and were DQ'd. So, in the end, not even half the players were there, I believe. And now you can guess what happened. N nearly everyone had a shit ton of free wins. Some people got to um, top 8, winning only a single set or stuff like that. And I was one of the two players there that did not get a single DQ win. Well... I mean, on one hand, obviously, it's cool that I got to play. On the other hand, I actually had to work for my results. Uh, but yeah, I guess that's how it is sometimes. Also, a slight disadvantage I had in my time zone as this tournament started. It was already 9.30 p.m. Yeah, p.m. is the right one. And as the tournament progressed, I had to play at midnight and later on, so I was kind of tired. But yeah, I was seated 9 for this tournament, but honestly, this tournament was either seated randomly or just very, very badly. Because the honestly only two players who actually stood a chance, Krakbo and Mu, uh, we are seated 31 and 32. Yeah, uh, surprise. Both of them met in winners finals and then again in grand finals. But what did I do during my run? Another short thing before we start. The greatest advantage uh, this whole situation had for me is I had a shit ton of spotlight. Like of the 18 games I believe I played in this tournament. Three or four were not on stream. So I had a lot of show time. And this, for example, was a game that was on stream. My winner's round three, because I did not have a winner's round one, I started in round two. And in round two, I had two not too exciting matches, beating a black skin K rule like. That, that, that sounded kinda racist. You know, the alt of K. Rule. Like, what else am I supposed to say? Uh, called Mr. Ramadan. Not too exciting those matches. I didn't save any of those and for another reason as well, but we'll get to that later. So, winners round 3 fighting for a battle against one of the two favorites of the tournament, Krugbo. I had to play a Devil Mel. As you can see, pink alt K rule. And another player that got to this point without playing a single set. So not warmed up yet. Could I do anything with that? Could I, well, capitalize off of my situation. Um, this was already game two. Game one we played on battlefield and I think in the beginning I was 
not playing 12. I don't exactly remember anymore. But I definitely won this first game. I won game 1, was obviously up 1-0 with that. And went into game 2. So let's finally look into the first match against Devil Mel that you see isn't taking too long. Why is that? Let's start off. The down tilt and the jabs. Reading the rollback. Reading the... Uh, okay, not really reading the jump, but the landing. Reading the air dodge. Alright, first stock gun, 15, uh, 14 seconds. And that was on stream, as I said. Sadly missing my down tilt there. Could have gotten something. I had quite some momentum here. As you can see, oh, I'm getting more damage in. And this is not how you want a battle to start. Alright, so I'm in a ledge trap situation, hitting the down air, 40 seconds, two stocks are gone already. This was definitely the most destructive game I had in the whole tournament. Which is a reason why I wanted to show it here. Especially this first stock where I really, really read all the options. Or, well, I didn't really read that falling forward air earlier, but I just covered enough. This was really, like, there, there really was no coming back for Mel after that. The momentum was all on my side, the lead definitely was as well. And yeah, how do you come back from that? Uh, they definitely got some more stuff done at this point. Sadly, my back air didn't spike here. That may have already put him in a spot where I could... Yeah, that F smash hit, by the way. Still living, though. And now they are getting the down air two frame. As I said, at this point, they get some stuff done. I'm getting hit by some more stuff. Getting jabbed here, sadly. And yeah, I am getting hit a lot, but they go off stage aggressively. I get the down air. The game is over in a minute and 20 seconds. Sadly, not a little earlier, because I could have sent that into 60 second games at Elite Smash, uh, at Yeet Smash if done a little faster. But yeah, so I got into the match for top 8 winner side. Against Krugbo, one of the two favorites. And have I saved one of those games? No, I haven't. Uh, but honestly, it's what you'd expect. I got messed up 2-0, not standing an actual chance. So I had to wait for a long time in losers finals of the pools. And... Yeah. Just waiting, not much happening. Until sometime later, I met a Bones, a K rule card admin playing a white K rule skin. Honestly, I did not quite know how good he was at the game. Game one, we had a slight problem connection errors. I still don't know. If uh, whose fault it was, but I did not have like any other set, so I don't know. Yeah. And the first game, he may or may not have SD'd twice at like once at zero, once at 20, because of misinputs, which is kind of sad and. Obviously, he couldn't win that first game either after that. So, in game two, he was definitely trying to take the set back. Very early lead by him. Punishing me well here. But now I'm getting in some damage. Not going for the two frame, I could have, but as I said, the connection was bad and I wasn't confident in hitting them. The jab one crown, getting him more damage than me. Very greedy nair by me. That forward smash was just a misinput. I really should have grabbed there, like, 
Yeah, seeing this stuff happen afterwards, I definitely know that I could have played better and played quite greedy and tired at points. I'm still not quite out yet, as you can see, hitting the down at 2 frame back too even. So, now, with the game being pretty much even, who can build up a lead and maybe capitalize of it? He grabs me, back throws me, I air dodge to ledge because I don't want to use my up if not necessary. And here, he jumps with his crown, getting too greedy. So, even though he was just an advantage seconds ago, I get my F tilt here and kill him for it. Big lead. Can I win the set out of it? Hitting the dash attack, his crown hits me. I hit my nair. I hit my down air. That's the stock. Yep. That one was fast. He respawned at... 38, 39. He died at 8, 30 or 8, 29 around that part. Yep. He died at 8, 29. 10 seconds stock and until I got in my first hit. Like 6 seconds passed. So technically, this was a 4 second stock. Yeah, and three hits, obviously. It definitely was an unlucky interaction for him as well, but come on, give me that. And it was on stream. And I hate how it was on stream. Running Buffalo, the streamer, if you are seeing this, thank you very much for while I was doing this combo, doing weird sound effects with Fortnite Battle Pass, I just shit. <laughs> thank you very much. <laughs> I really hope the clip gets into Yeet Smash with exactly what you did there. Alright, next up. Uh, this old K rule. And why didn't I save any games from my first set? Because in my first top 8 set, I met Mr. Ramadan again. This is the same player I beat in my first set of the day. And that lost to me in technically his first set because his winner's round 1 was a DQ. And then he got a DQ. And a DQ. And beat a guy 2-1. And got a DQ to get into top 8. So he got quite some DQs while I fought my way up here. So we met again. For a much closer set this time. This one was game... 3 I believe. Um, top 8 was all best of 5. This one was game 3 I believe. If I'm correct with that. Which I should be, I believe this was the first match that was streamed of the set, because here, Running Buffalo streamed something from winner's side first, that went by fast, I believe, and then dropped into this set. There, that's two of the sets that did not get streamed. Wait. Yeah, yeah, I'm... I think I'm right about that. I was just thinking, I think there were five of my games that weren't streamed, but then it was three of the games in the following set. Because, yeah, spoilers, I won this set. But it was close, got down to game five. At this point, we were at 1 1, and as you will see, this was definitely the most defensive set I had all day. So I had already tried looking for a few things, even though it was hard, as I didn't have much focus anymore. It was like 11.30 p.m. or something at this point. He got a better start definitely. I missed my spacing on the down air. Got back air for it. Bad start for me. A very big thing I watch out for that I really, really need to try to get better with in general. I do that a lot. 
is just when I'm at a platform, I love running off forward, air drifting forwards, which just can and will get punished very often. And he, for example, punished it too quite sometimes. Here I got a reversal. He missed his recoveries. Uh, luckily, I threw the crown onto the stage as I realized that fast enough. So once again, back to this game. This is exactly why I say K. Rilditos can be one of the lamest matchup in matchups in the game, because sometimes if you are really wanting to win, they can look like this. So yeah, very even game as you can see here. My greatest advantage in this set that I had figured out at this point was that he would often fall for my reflects. Like not here, but especially he li he loved ledge trapping with the very same pattern, catching the neutral get up. He loved ledge trapping with the very same crown cannonball pattern and very very often I could here the crown helped me out a lot, getting me a lot of damage. Uh, yeah. He would throw out the same stuff a lot and if I just jump immediately reflected from ledge, I could catch him very, very often with his reflected cannonball that killed him quite early, which is actually how after nearly throwing as I was up a lot, I won game 5. This game, you can see, I do have quite a lead right now. I'm playing defensively because, well, I'm not in the situation that I have to approach him. Because, well, I'm a full stock up. And exactly this could happen a lot in the set. So I beat Mr. Ramadan, went on into top 5 playing Vess. And this set was honestly when I just realized, okay, I'm done. I'm too tired. I got top 5. That's pretty much enough for me. I am not gonna do well anymore. Also, a little thing about the set before. I got one uh, very nice ledge trap once that I didn't, uh, that I don't have the game for right now. Where I just read his uh, get up after some ledge trapping, throwing the crown to the left as he was on the left ledge of PS2. I was standing at the platform, the reverse crown hit him getting up and I got a true F smash out of it on the platform to kill him, which was kinda cool. So this set only game f uh, 3 and 4 were streamed I believe, more games we did not have. This was game 2 after I was down 1-0 and that first game was also what made me realize I cannot prevail in this set anymore and it kind of just broke ev the every last motivation I had because I was up by a lot and as he was last stock at like 70 also hit a back air off stage. He misinput that quite sometimes I feel like he hit a back air as he was off stage at 70 last stock in game one but he tagged it on the stage and while I was at zero I just didn't really get back into the match anymore through that game and yeah didn't have the stamina to really go on anymore you can see that in this game also I am doing quite some stupid mistakes, not playing too well, not closing out the stock as it would have been good. Yeah, I. Th that's kind of the sad part as my talking should tell you, I lost this set and I honestly just feel like I could have gotten it. If I just had played this guy earlier. Or like if the whole tournament had happened earlier on the day for me. I feel like that was really what destroyed me in the end. Even though I'm getting quite some stuff here as you can see. 
he liked going high like that because he wa didn't want to get too framed. Hitting my forward air there, the neutral air. Catching the neutral get up with dash attack, I'm up. And yeah, as you may get by this at this point, I got two framed here. Um, I already said that this game, this set had four games, and this was the one that I actually beat him. So yeah, a little more defensive gameplay. Very bad dash attack by me, but he really didn't punish it well. And because of the double jumps he did down there a lot, I got the spike, getting at least one game of the set. But afterwards, not really getting anything done anymore, getting punished for a shit ton of stupid stuff, staying at ledge for too long for multiple times, and losing the set 3-1. Wes ended up getting third place after beating another guy in the round afterwards, but as I already said, Krakbo and Mu were the only ones that really stood a chance, honestly. And Mu did up winning this tournament, after winning winners finals and grand finals winner side. So yeah. I ended up fifth place. And yeah, I still don't really know how to feel about it. Like if it would have been the full 36 players, I, I would definitely be happy about it. But for me it kind of was like it was all the players because for some reason I managed to have my seating perfectly placed to not get a, literally a single DQ and I still don't know how. Like I, I could I could google the uh, like the bracket right now but that would take some time. You know what? I don't care. Was I'm honestly quite confused. I'm quite sure he won the first one and Troix won the second one. But do you see how many DQs are there in this bracket? Do you see how many DQs are there all over this tournament? There, there were nearly no games happening. Look at this loser side. Here, for example, Mr. Ramadan, Mr. Ramadan, DQ, DQ, DQ. Here he played a set, here he d had a DQ. Earlier on, um, he had a DQ and then lost to me. And I'm the one guy. A game, games, um, games, games, games. Going down here. A games. Top 8 will take some time to load. Games? Games? Like, th thank you. I believe there was one other player that did the same. That kind of uh, really had to play every game. But it was a single one, I believe. Here, Charm. Wasn't it that guy who played here? Played here? Nope, it wasn't him. Sergeant played here, dropped to losers, played here, played here. Here, it was Sergeant that had to actually play every game that he had and didn't get any DQ wins. But I'm not 100% sure right now. No, no, LSB had to play all of them as well. That means there were three players that got no DQ wins. And then there were some people that already made 9th place by just DQing their way through. Which honestly is kinda stupid even though that DQ in my opinion is the dumbest one. Because that guy literally didn't he play to that very point. Yeah. Okay, barely. DQ, 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 he lost that and then left and, as it seems. Congratulations. Well, that's it for this video though. If you liked it, please consider leaving a like and like and or subscribe to the channel. See you next time, hopefully.